currently in sunny Lisbon, Portugal, and I have a new addition to my tech inventory. It is the GL iNet Oppo travel router. It provides me a secure, fast, and private internet connection. And if you're someone who's always on the move, going from one Airbnb to another Airbnb or a hotel, and you need a private connection, this is perfect. And let me tell you why. The Oppo is a dual band travel router from GLI Net, a brand known for making open source, privacy focused networking gear. It supports dual band Wi Fi, so the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz networks, and can be used as a router, repeater, access point, and also as a VPN client. Currently in my Airbnb, there are four rooms, including the one that I'm currently in, and all guests connect to one Wi Fi network. So they are connecting to one box. It's a single network. That means all devices on the network can communicate with each other, can see each other. So if you have a workstation and there is a shared folder on it, other devices can actually see that um, shared folder. And this visibility actually is concerning because there's no privacy. This is where the travel router comes in place. It acts as a repeater. So connects to the Airbnb's Wi-Fi and it broadcasts its own Wi-Fi network. You can add in OpenVPN or WireGuard VPN, so it supports that. And I've currently configured my NordVPN servers. Since I'm in Lisbon, I have configured it to connect to a Lisbon server, so more added protection to it. You can also tether your cellular data via USB cable. I haven't tried this, but the option is always there. The best thing about this whole setup is that once all my devices are connected to the travel router's Wi-Fi, so my PC, my laptop, my partners, my mobile phones and everything, once it's all connected up, I only need to sign in to the Airbnb's or the hotel's Wi-Fi just once and that is just on the Wi-Fi on the travel router. This way I'm not only saving my time but I'm also saving their time because not everyone now has to sign up individually on their iPhone or on their laptop or on their iPad. So let's break down the specs a little bit. So we have got dual CPU at one gigahertz, 120 megabytes of RAM, three Ethernet ports, one VAN, two LANs, and a USB 2.0 port for storage or tethering as mentioned earlier. In terms of speed, you're looking at up to 300 megabytes per second on 2.4 gigahertz network and 867 megabytes on 5 gigahertz network. That's more than enough for HD streaming, video calls, and even remote work. Being lightweight and pocket size, and also I've managed to purchase this from Amazon for 32 pounds, is pretty reasonable and travel friendly. Opal runs on a customized version of OpenWRT, which gives users a very clean web browser user interface. And it also gives a lot of flexibility within the, the web browser, the UI. OpenWRT can also run on a Raspberry Pi 5, but uh, when you're traveling and you want something quick and easy to set up, this is where the travel router from GLINet shines. Since I'm currently using the base model and the model's high to this, actually you can install AdGuard Home and have it most secure. But due to the memory requirements for the AdGuard Home application, you cannot install that on the base model. But we'll get to that in a bit. Having a quick look at the user interface, 192.168.8.1 is the default IP address of the Wi-Fi router. So this is when you're able to, when you're connected to your Wi-Fi network, your travel router's Wi-Fi network. When you go to this IP address, once you're connected to the Wi-Fi travel router, you'll be able to get to the admin section. And so as you can see, currently it is connected to NOS 3606. 5G, 5 gigahertz network, and this is where you go to sign in to the Airbnb or hotel's Wi-Fi network. So, clicking on switch network will give you an option to join Wi-Fi. It is currently scanning it. As you can see, it's finished scanning it, and there's so many of these Wi-Fi networks just around me. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a cozy tie of Wi-Fi network. Anyways, so what this does is takes the public network, acts as a repeater, and broadcasts its own Wi-Fi name, which is, in my case, Aljo Wi-Fi Travel. So that's pretty much 90% of the case use of this. And to use VPNs, you go down to the VPN dashboard, 
and for my VPN, which is a NordVPN, I want to open VPN client and this is where I have set up the servers. I can update the servers when they are not in use. So currently, I'm currently using the Wi-Fi router, so I'm not able to switch this. And that's why I've grayed out over here. And if you go to the VPN dashboard, you can see that it's connected. There's traffic going in and out. And I've got a virtual IP. Um, pretty standard stuff. So if you have a WireGuard client, a WireGuard server, this is where you would set that up. You can also enable the Tor, the Onion router. Um, it's currently in beta, so I haven't worked with this. I haven't enabled it. I haven't played around with it. But the option is there. If you go down to applications, this is where you would install applications such as AdCard Home. And as I mentioned, due to the memory restrictions of this device, because it's the base model, paid like 30 quid for it it cannot install it so if i install it it will not actually show up on the applications so to get around this i will be using adguard home's dns server so if i go to the network and go to dns i can do manual dns and place in the dns ips so what this does is it communicates with adguard home servers which by default block ads and that's exactly what I need. It fits my purpose. Whereas if you install the application, you'll be able to check what websites are being blocked, what traffic is getting blocked. And also you may be able to add in your own custom rules. And I think for an everyday user, for someone that is just using it, just like how I am, just as a travel router, set it up and the family can use it. This is all you probably need and you won't have to go further than that. So with this, all my devices are connected to my Wi-Fi travel router and I just have to sign up once onto their Wi-Fi network. So it saves me a lot of time. If you found any part of this video useful, please hit the like button and subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.